Morning, Dallas. Morning, David. Good to see you again for another catch-up. Yep. Um, let's talk briefly about Saturday, because we did talk about it after the game. You were a bit down, I thought, but, but unsurprisingly. I was all right. Somebody else said that, but I was all right. As soon as I got the coach, I was fine. Can you appear well? Um, it was horrendous, really, about 20 seconds before... I'm doing a huddle, which we do and clap the fans before kick-off. And I'm doing that, and as I'm walking off, Christian's come on and said, Max Cosma, can I play? It was a bit of a choke up because we're training all week, how we're going to play. So uh, we just put Tom in there. Um, then I thought, well, you know, I just thought a good side, Halifax. I thought we were a better side. I thought if he took the 44th minute and the 46th minute away, I thought it was a great performance. It's the best I've seen a club. It's my fourth year um, manager here. I know two years have been spoiled by Curva, so you could say it's my third year, really. But um, it's it's four it's um, and it's the best I've seen the club walking in. It looked real. It looked proper. You know, like all the banners and the, the outside bars and everything with buzz about the place. It was a massive buzz. So anything what let with them was a result. Really, the crowd were fantastic. And even when we lost, I, I think they knew that we we had a go. So the only great thing is the club looked after as well by going down to Torquay and putting, doing things right there. So I've got to be grateful to them. Grateful and support us to turn up, and it's just that little thing what spoiled it was a result. Apart from that, I thought it was a great deal, I thought we played well. Down, I'm always down for lose games, but you pick yourself up quickly, you got to. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, as we all know, one of the main reasons we all love football is because you never can be certain what's going to happen, that's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes the better team actually loses. Yeah, it does happen. We did have sixty-four percent possession or something like that. We did, uh, but Halifax had that a week before near lost. So it just swings and roundabouts, and we made a point of seeing and have all the possession. We're passing the ball well at the minute we are, and all that you know. But possessions, like, we've got to score goals. We've got to score goals. And the only thing was defensive mistakes. But I think Wheels didn't. We had twenty-one crosses defended, nineteen brilliantly. 21 crosses against Wilson. That's unbelievable. Good on that. So, um, and we got the first head on every single one, except for the two where a large scored and the other one. But that's unbelievable defending. And on Monday it was unbelievable. But it's a lack of competition by the, the three, five, if you want to call them. Um, or like, it was four on Saturday, to be honest. But like, the four there, they've got to do better. That's just individual mistakes. You take that individual mistakes away, then it's a really good performance. You say... It was unbelievable defending to head away 19 out of 21 crosses, but yeah. were you not a bit concerned that they were getting 21 crosses in? No, because that's the way we are player. And um, you know, if, if you've got to trust in your defenders, we're actually attacking football, um, you know, like, you know, so you're all going to have, have a calm. So when you're under pressure down that hill, yeah. you know, it is going to be a lot yeah, of balls yeah. coming away. And you know, you talk about crosses, you talk like balls getting slid in, you know, anything that's coming out here in your box, we defend it very well. It could be a bit of a concern what you said there, to be honest. But um, you know, if you defend it, you do, if you don't, and we didn't defend well. Um, on Saturday, but the rest of the play was very, very good, so I had to take a lot of heart from us. Yeah, I did say to you on Saturday, were you a bit concerned about going down to Torquay with a limited size squad because of injuries and illness and so on? Um, but you, you basically, well, not basically, you kept the same team exactly, despite being very critical of the defence. You could have made at least one change, or I said I was going to, right. I did. But I kept, it was the same team with different formation, wasn't it? Yeah. And a, when you think in hindsight, we could have changed our formation on Saturday a little bit um, because Tom Champion was the back three were unbelievable down there, unbelievable and all that, you know. So um, I, I went there with Chip. Let's like see the club look, look after. We went there Saturday, we had a great day Sunday going in the pool and all that with Clarkie and things like that. We prepared a little training session for half an hour and I could tell the lads were focused. So I had no doubt I woke up on the morning, um, like Ian Day, I said, just think about it, what you're going to do. And uh, I work on the morning, me thinking I might make two or three changes of freshness, but I looked at the lads and I looked at Tom Champion, I looked at oh, they're fresh. So uh, all it was is just change the shape, change the shape, and they were fresh as honestly. So they've got a lot of credit, the lads got to take loads of credit because it's all down to the players who've done it. But you know, there's things like Clarky and you know, things like what uh, um, John and the chairman and the board of directors done for her. Kelvin got it all spot on, the food was fantastic, the hotel was fantastic, everybody bonded together, someone went to the pictures together, someone done 10 pin brewing, and you got people who knew each other and they were fantastic. So I thought we'd win the game to be honest. So against a very good say, Torquay, good club, very hard done by last year, you know, I've been top of the table that long, got a good manager, experienced manager, it, it gets rocking down there, there's other fans at Diz, we knew that as well, and you know, you get a bit of banter with him and all that, you know, but he goes everywhere you go. But um, I thought it was a great result and very pleasing, but I, I do think the lads done unbelievable. But yeah, I went down there in my own head thinking I'm going to make changes, but if you like yourself, you like everybody else. So I woke up um, you know, Monday morning and said, This is what the team's going to be, we're going to change shape, we're going to keep right, keep right, because people like Tyreek will get in our team and Blocky, but in Loza, but we've only played 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here. We've got a behind close friendly on Friday to give them 90 minutes. And 
it'll be different next week with any coming back and we don't know how long Max but I just thought it was the best team to do if I got it wrong I'll be the first one to say one change in shape two get but I thought we got it spot on to be honest yeah we'll, we'll come back to that game in a moment if that's okay yeah. I was chatting briefly with Martin yesterday who said that the, the whole trip was planned in considerable detail yeah. uh, firstly by Clark in, in Dyer but then you even had contributions from um, Gary Lewin about suggestions of things to do. Oh, I said, it's just, we want to get a spot on because we're full aim. We can I said, listen, we're going to go down the side here, so we've got a spot on. So, yeah, we'll do a little swimming thing in the morning, doing stretches in the pool. Brilliant, we could never do that um, on a Sunday morning. A little half an hour session, no more than half an hour it was. The food was spot on, the rest was spot on. So, I was really good. You even had the chairman in a, in a bikini swimsuit good in the pool, you know what I mean? So, uh, Oh, so she's in for the next Olympics, she is. But, uh, but she doesn't mind, she just joins in as part of the parcel of being at work and we all join in together, you know. So she jump, jumped in the pool with everybody else, fantastic. So uh, that's what it's all about, everybody sticking together, it was and good. That, and that's reminded me, Martin said in his interview with Ian after the game on Monday that the players had some hydrotherapy. So right. can you explain what that is exactly? Oh, I've done it, Lee. Is that, is that when you're going to In the pool, yeah. Oh, no, in the pool, I hate the fit, you know, like, I, I just sat there and watched them and all that, you know, stuff. So what but, is it? But we're doing things like doing stretching and all that in the pool, so walking around the pool, doing your groins, doing okay. your different stretches, and it, it takes all the impact, so it's yeah. great for you and all that, you know. And, so it's a bit know. like a warm-up routine, ah, but, but in, in the water. Pool, in water, so you're not doing anything on your joints and on your knees right. and all that, you know. And uh, Gary Lewin suggested, I think, and uh, went for that, and Clark, you done it great, to be honest, you know, I really did. And um, the lads had a good laugh about it as well, you know, because... Um, they're going around the pool and just case he's up to there, but, <laughs> but Musa's just up to his shorts. Yeah, I know, I know, but uh, but uh, that was uh, no, it was, it was good, great, great travel. Enjoyed the trip. We had to get together. And obviously, it was John's first trip as well, and he loved it. He did, and um, everybody loved it. So that uh, was good. But uh, um, I, I'm really pleased how it went. Good. And then turning to Monday's match, um, two goals up in five minutes. Uh, again, chatting to Martin yesterday. Neither of us could remember. A working team ever doing that? Doing before. that yeah. Someone will immediately find a game where we did, but well, I, went, I can't I, remember. What I happened. went to players before the game and I said, "If you don't win this game, the chairman's going to come back in a swimsuit." <laughs> and <the game> through, <laughs> and um, obviously, two minutes after four minutes, that's why. So, cheers, chairman. Good girl. Uh, no, um, I, I, I fancied the group. You know, I fancied the way we were, and uh, there's a lot of determination players around there. You know, we're all going to lose a couple of games and whatever, and um, you know, we want to do better than we did last season, which we believe we can, everything's laid out for us, um, so it's fantastic, we're just doing get, you know, we've got our own little private place that we have, that's great, and that was great about the weekend, you know, sometimes when you last season, or a couple of years, and you're there once a week, and you can't do anything, uh, we're just locked away, we're locked away, talk with nobody sees we've, we've got locked away this weekend, nobody sees we don't have to read forums, or I mean, who are in the forums, and anything else, you don't have to look at a newspaper, non-league, you don't have to, just, we be together. That's all we've got to do. We we'll just ignore the outside world, good or bad, really, because it make you too good this week. And like, oh, that was brilliant. And the lads are brilliant. Just keep it to yourselves. That's what we've got to do. All we got to try to do is do well for the support us and this football club. We're only going to do well by battling what we've been doing the last few years and doing well. Everything else doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Now I've tried to put a point across. It doesn't matter. Well, and I no pressure to talk here at all. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, all the pressure has got to come to me. I didn't feel any pressure in the group. I didn't feel under pressure. We we're having a, a drink on Sunday afternoon, just talking with football and. Great, like, like, like um, me with Chairman and John and people like that. There was, there was no pressure there at all. You know, he's in it for a three-year plan to try to, you know, help try to get out of the league if possible. But um, but the lads didn't feel any pressure. So if you got senior players, it's important when to talk key and um, you know the start felt very surprising, but didn't surprise us because I thought we looked fresh. And I thought we'd battle the game because Torquay are great to say, like, like, listen, what happened to them last season is very sad. And I mean, that we've had some great little games against them. And then um, Gary Johnson went in there, and I think we were something like fifth bottom of the league. And we were top, and he overtook us, and all the rest of it. And then um, it, so it's good, good, good fans, you know. Yes, I shout and scream, we all do, and it's part of the parcel of football, you know. And then, um, but you know, I, I fell for them last season, but it's a hard place to go up. And if you got the first goal, the crowd lifts, so it's important that we didn't concede first, and we knew that. But I thought we were on the front foot all the time, I really did. I really yeah, did. I watched Gary Johnson's post match interview, and uh, he was clear that he wasn't happy with the sending off but not so much with the second yellow card but the first one we won't we don't need to debate that but um he did concede also that they were two nil down well before the oh. sending off happened uh you, you can never tell like you know, I, I haven't seen it on a replay or nothing like that. all i knew about we started to give very well we were on top would it made any difference at 11 you just do it now so it, no. he went with 10 
against Notts County and defended unbelievable well and you know, all like you know, and sort of won the game. You know, so it just swings and roundabouts a bit, but you know, we've had ten before, it'd be hard to break down. But the bottom line is like you know, I, I would have fancied with any on Saturday I thought everybody was on it, you know, the the back five didn't give anything away, midfield three worked the socks off and done well, the subs come on and done a great job, Kane scoring a great goal and all that, you know, and if, I thought George Oakley was incredible, I really did, I know Tav got a couple of goals, but I thought George was our man in match, I thought he was absolutely incredible, the way he held the ball, the way he ran the lane, I thought he was brilliant, I thought he was our best player by a million miles, I did. Mm, good, good to hear. Um, sadly, in a way, you've now not got a game to follow up with the momentum and impetus that that could give you. Is it a bad thing, or is it a good thing to have a bit of a rest? Yeah, I make mean, it because we have got one or two knocks, as you know. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, lads were shattered coming off the pitch because I don't know how to do these fixtures. They do a Saturday, a Saturday, a Saturday, a Saturday, a Saturday, a Saturday. It should have been like Saturday, Tuesday, give it, you know. But it hasn't been. So it's tough look, and we've got a behind players game against a Premiership club. So we're very grateful for that on Friday, and then on Saturday, of course, we can go and watch games, you know, we've got South End against Wrexham coming up, I believe, and things like that, so it gives you a chance, will it be good or bad, we'll not know until next Saturday, which is great, um, can't wait for that one, Wrexham are fantastic what we have got and all the rest of it, so yeah, I, I, I don't know, it's like anything else, that some of the lads want to see me tomorrow morning, and they've got the hump, because they're not playing, and I like that, I like them getting the hump, I, I don't mind the man, the man chat about things, but you, you don't know if you're right until left of a game, you know what I mean, you don't know if you're right, could have had that split second fourth before Saturday, and maybe put Kane in there and be on the front foot. I thought we'd put Tom there instead of a ship and all that, you know. If you lose the game, it's the wrong thing to do. Not Tom's fault or Kane's fault, just the wrong thing to manage that to do. If you change tactics and you change a team and win Saturday, it was the right thing to do. So I can say to some players I was wrong Saturday, I was right there because you don't know if you're right. So these things coming up, um, would it be better? We'll not know until we play Wrexham. We'll not know, we'll not know then. And we've got two hard games coming up then, then and Bromley. So we always knew it was going to be a tough start. But I look at the fixtures and I look at all the games and I'm, I'm trying to think of one what's easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not nobody's going to fool, do you know? Like people say, but Wilson, Wilson's a blinking good side. I said that, they pick up points. I went to Chesterfield and had all possession. Then they give them a good run for money south end, they'll pick up points. They will. So I think everybody's going to, I think it's going to be a doggy dog league. I don't think anybody's going to run away with it. I think it's going to be a really tough league. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. And Jack Cook got in the league's team of the weekend. Right, no, no. Oh, no, good. He's a good player, isn't he? You know, yeah, so that's something we would have kept if we, if we could have done, but we couldn't. But I'll tell you what, our three weren't bad on, uh, on Monday, I'll tell you what, I think. Good. Um, last thing then, this time, there's, do you think there's been, um, there's been quite a lot of publicity in the higher echelons of football about referees letting things go that they or VAR would have jumped on last season um, in terms of the physicality of challenges yeah. that are deemed to be either not fouls or not worthy of yellow or, or even red cards? Have you noticed anything like that in this league yet? Should sure, put it. I went to ref on Saturday, who I thought, you know, you do think he does all right, you know, but I see us, we're going to box and people get shirts pulled. And he said, but I'll give a penalty, um, I, I would have to give 10 penalties a game. And I'm saying, well, why don't you do it? Yeah. Because if it's shirt pulled in the box and things like that, and if you if you if you got like, you grab, don't you? Our players do it. Our players do it. And you grab it. It's a wrong answer. I want something else differently. But you say it's got to come from the top, which is true. So if you grab a night out where this rule's coming from somewhere, I don't know where. And you're grabbing the corner, you can't move because your shirt's grabbed. If a blue gives a penalty because it's a foul, if you like, then I think we might have five penalties, penalties a game for. The next couple of months, but it'll soon stop them doing it. Exactly. That's, my, that's my opinion. They yeah. can include other players as well. Who gives them a right to pull shirts? It's cheating, isn't it? Pulling shirts, you shouldn't pull shirts. And it, but we believe that you can, it, within reason. Uh, we do. I, I talked to one manager and he said, "Oh, you, you'll get away with pulling shirts." But what gives that the right to do that? I just, it's wrong. It's it's foul. You know, like yeah. you know, if you pull a shirt, it's foul. So if a referee's got the gut to see a penalty, which it is. But then they'll say, "Well, we'll give five penalties every game." Okay, let's have five penalties every game. That's my opinion. But up there, they're saying, oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, we, we, but the only way it's going to stop, because it'll only get worse, the only way you're going to stop, is it? Because it'll be next, somebody be giving, be on drinking a piggyback on who's at the hover and saying, that's all right to do, like, you know, so it's, um, you know, it's, that's the way it's going to go. So, my opinion, just have a rule tomorrow and say, you're not allowed to pull shirts because you never have been for the last 110 years of football. What gives it right? The last couple of years, it comes in and you can do it. That includes the main players as well doing this or grabbing somebody or not letting somebody go. And if a referee's got the good to see a penalty, 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 it'll soon stop. That's what I think. Yeah. But um, have you noticed any pattern in terms of 
um, tackles that would have been a free kick previously. No, I haven't. That they're letting go. I haven't. No. It's too soon. It's too it? soon. I think I haven't went looking for it, but you should be able to tackle. Man, tackling's a skill. You know, I mean, Felman's not a skill. Tackling's a skill. You know, you get that one where they come up and they go and whack into the ball. And the referee says, oh, intent. If you hit the ball, you hit the ball. If you hit the man, it's a foul, or you send off. If you hit the ball, it's a skill. If you get your two there for, or even your studs there for, you know, and stuff like that, on the ball, and all that, you know, and it's always the ten things. I was a tackle like that, you know, I go in there. If I missed it, I'll get sent off. Uh, but being but tackling back, it's a skill. You know, um, foul is not a skill. If you're going to do somebody, it's awful for somebody. You're going to try to foul somebody. That's not very good. But this tackling's a skill. But you've got all these proofers now who just want to go and boom, 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 boom. No tackling, under 23 football. And that's what happens. You know, like, you know, it, uh, it's, it's wrong for me. I think tackling's a massive skill. I think defenders are going out the game. There's only John Terry I can think of the last 10 years who was a proper defender. All these lot now, they've got on the ball, got, which is great. But how about the tackling, brave heading and putting your head where it hurts and putting your foot where it hurts and every, every now and again giving a photo away. It's gone out again, so I think it's quite sad. Really. And just because you've just mentioned it, um, is there a concern or not? maybe not a concern um, in terms of your behind closed doors friendly against an unnamed Premier League team? Yeah. That it, will you have to tell your players don't tackle them? No, I don't just think. I think that's probably one of the reasons to do it. Like, you know, they will, we'll do a lot of this. We'll play a lot of friendlies behind closed doors because we can't and all that, you know. And then... Um, the bottom line is, um, you know, we will play a different way. But I, I think um, we are like that. I think we are like the physicality. I think that's why Chelsea want to play against us because these young, young lads doing like the physicality lads. And I think that's why I do because we're not as good as them. But the bottom line is, we can rough them up a little bit. I think that's part of their education. So I think so, they're quite happy. So you don't actually have a um, an agreement with the no. other team's coach no, that you won't. You'll just shadow I, each other. We just no, one hundred percent. If not, it's pointless having a friendly. Let us try no, to get yeah. let us try to get the ball off them as a fitness exercise, and let them have our physicality. I remember Chelsea with well, Chelsea before three 0 unheard of in it, but because we were more physical second half, one four three. Two years ago, be Chelsea down here. Three years ago, doing that upon header when you battered them all night, one ball in the box physicality. You now these young lads have got to learn it. Like our young lads do. You know that's why we're sending Leo away and Salima away to get physicality in them. You know Rumble and Evans and all that. They're all good away to learn about the physicality of football. You got to have it. Sure. Okay, well, enjoy that game. I'm sure yep. uh, sure your players will enjoy coming up against one or two famous names, no doubt. Yep. And uh, we'll talk again in future. Brilliant. Okay, good luck.